Club Penguin from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Club Penguin was a massively multiplayer online game, or MMO, involving a virtual world that contained a range of online games and activities. It was created by New Horizon Interactive, now known as Disney Canada Inc. Players used cartoon penguin avatars and played in a winter set virtual world. After beta testing, Club Penguin was made available to the general public on October 24, 2005, and expanded into a large online community such that by late 2007, it was claimed Club Penguin had over 30 million user accounts. In July 2013, Club Penguin had over 200 million registered user accounts. While free memberships were available, revenue was predominantly raised through paid memberships, which allowed players to access a range of additional features, such as the ability to purchase virtual clothing, furniture, and in-game pets called Puffles for their penguins through the usage of in-game currency. The success of Club Penguin led to New Horizon being purchased by the Walt Disney Company in August 2007 for the sum of $350 million, with an additional $350 million in bonuses should specific targets be met by 2009. The game was specifically designed for children aged 6 to 14, however, users of any age were allowed to play Club Penguin. Thus, a major focus of the developers was on child safety with a number of features having been introduced to the game to facilitate this. These features included having a, quote, ultimate safe chat mode, whereby users selected their comments from a menu, filtering that prevented swearing and the revelation of personal information, and moderators who patrolled the game. On January 30th, 2017, it was announced that the game would be discontinued on March 29th, 2017. Club Penguin later shut down its servers on March 30th, 2017, at 12.01 a.m. The game was replaced by a successor titled Club Penguin Island. The original game has since been recreated on a number of private servers using Swift files from Club Penguin. The two most popular ones, cpps.me and Club Penguin Rewritten, have reached over 2 million players. Section 1. History Section 1.1, Predecessors, 2000 through 2004. The first seeds of what would become Club Penguin began as a Flash 4 web-based game called Snow Blasters that developer Lance Preeb had been developing in his spare time in July of 2000. Preeb's attention was brought to penguins after he happened to glance at a Far Side cartoon featuring penguins that was sitting on his desk. The project was never finished, and instead morphed into Experimental Penguins. Experimental Penguins was released through Preeb's Company of Employment, the Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada-based online game and comic developer Rocket Snail Games in July 2000, though it ultimately went offline the following year. It was used as the inspiration for Penguin Chat, also known as Penguin Chat 1, a similar game which was released shortly after Experimental Penguins' removal. Released July 2003, Penguin Football Chat, also known as Penguin Chat 2, was the second attempt at a penguin-themed MMORPG, and was created on Flash 5, and used the same interface as Experimental Penguins. The game contained various mini-games. The premier title of Rocket Snail Games was Ballistic Biscuit, a game that would be placed into, the, into Experimental Penguins, and eventually be adapted into Club Penguin's Hydro Hopper. Rocket Snail's game's Mancala Classic would also be introduced into the game as Mancala. Lance Preeb, as well as co-workers Lane Merrifield and Dave Crisco, started to formulate the Club Penguin concept when the trio were unsuccessful in finding, quote, something that had some social components but was safe, and not just marketed as safe, for their own children. Dave Crisco in particular wanted to build a safe social networking site that their kids could enjoy free of advertising. In 2003, Merrifield and Preeb approached their boss with the idea of creating a spin-off company to develop the new product. The spin-off company would be known as New Horizon Interactive. Section 1.2, Early History, 2004 through 2007. 
Work commenced on the project in 2004, and the team settled on the name in the summer of 2005. The developers used the previous project, Penguin Chat 2, which was still online, as a jumping off point in the design process while incorporating concepts and ideas from experimental penguins. Penguin Chat's third version was released in April 2005 and was used to test the client and servers of Penguin Chat 4, renamed Club Penguin. Variants of Penguin Chat 3 included Crab Chat, Chibi Friends Chat, Goat Chat, Ultra Chat, and TV Chat. Users from Penguin Chat were allowed to beta test Club Penguin. The original plan was to release Club Penguin in 2010, but since the team had decided to fast track the project, the first version of Club Penguin went live on October 24, 2005, just after Penguin Chat servers were shut down in August 2005. While Penguin Chat used Electro Server, Club Penguin would use SmartFox Server. The developers financed their startup entirely with their own credit cards and personal lines of credit and maintained 100% ownership. Club Penguin started with 15,000 users, and by March, that number had reached 1.4 million, a figure which almost doubled by September when it hit 2.6 million. By the time Club Penguin was two years old, it had reached 3.9 million users despite lacking a marketing budget. The first mention of the game in the New York Times was in October 2006. The following year, Club Penguin spokesperson Karen Mason explained, we offer children the training wheels for the kinds of activities they might pursue as they get older. Section 1.3, Acquisition by Disney, 2007. Although the three Club Penguin co-creators had turned down lucrative advertising offers and venture capital investments in the past, in August 2007 they agreed to sell both Club Penguin and its parent company to Disney for the sum of $350.93 million. In addition, the owners were promised bonuses of up to $350 million if they were able to meet growth targets by 2009. Disney ultimately didn't pay the extra $350 million as Club Penguin missed both profit goals. At the point when it was purchased by Disney, Club Penguin had 11 to 12 million accounts, of which 700,000 were paid subscribers and was generating $40 million in annual revenue. In making the sale, Merrifield has stated that their main focus during negotiations was philosophical and that the intent was to provide themselves with the needed infrastructure in order to continue to grow. By late 2007, it was claimed that Club Penguin had over 30 million user accounts. In December of that year, the New York Times asserted that the game, quote, attracts seven times more traffic than Second Life. Club Penguin was the eighth top social networking site in April 2008, according to Nielsen. After Disney's acquisition, Disney Interactive had four MMOs to simultaneously juggle, Toontown, Pirates of the Caribbean Online, Pixie Hollow, and Club Penguin, with World of Cars set to follow soon. Lane Merrifield assured Global Toy News at the time that, quote, It's a lot of worlds to manage, but we have really strong teams. Merrifield's role changed from taking a back seat in daily game design to focusing on overall branding and quality control of the virtual gaming properties. One of his goals was to merge the Club Penguin Studio New Horizon Interactive in Kelowna, renamed to Disneyland Studios Canada, with Disneyland Studios LA. Disneyland Studios Canada focused its efforts on one product, with such features as multilingual versions, while Disneyland Studios LA focused on customer products and franchises of a wide selection of games. Merrifield was responsible for cross-pollinating both cultures. Section 1.4, Franchising and Growth, 2007 to 2015. Since Disney's purchase, Club Penguin continued to grow, becoming part of a larger franchise including video games, books, a television special, an anniversary song, and an app MMO. Disney has often used the game as a cross-promotion opportunity when releasing new films such as Frozen, Zootopia, and Star Wars, having special themed events and parties to celebrate their releases. The game forged an ever-growing mythology of characters and plot elements, including a pirate, a journalist, and a secret agent. In 2008, the first international office opened in Brighton, England to personalize the level of moderation and player support. 
Later international office locations included Sao Paulo and Buenos Aires. On March 11, 2008, Club Penguin released the Club Penguin Improvement Project. This project allowed players to be part of the testing of new servers, which were put into use in Club Penguin on April 14, 2008. Players had a clone of their Penguin made to test these new servers for bugs and glitches. The testing was ended on April 4, 2008. On June 20, 2011, the game's website temporarily crashed after the company let the Club Penguin domain name expire. In September 2011, one of Club Penguin's minigames, Puffle Launch, was released on iOS as an app. Merrifield commented, Kids are going mobile and have been asking for Club Penguin to go there with them. In late 2012, Merrifield left Disney Interactive to focus on his family in a new educational project, Fresh Grade. Chris Heatherly took Merrifield's former position. The company dropped the words Online Studios from its name in 2013. As of July 2013, Club Penguin had over 200 million registered user accounts. In 2013, Club Penguin hired singer and former Club Penguin player Jordan Fisher to record a song entitled It's Your Birthday to commemorate Club Penguin's 8th anniversary. Section 1.5 Decline and Discontinuation 2015 to 2017. In April 2015, it was revealed that Disney Interactive had laid off 28 members of Club Penguin's Kelowna headquarters due to the game's declining popularity. The company's UK office in Brighton was shut down around April 17, 2015. Some employees in the Los Angeles office were also let go. Disney Interactive replied to Castanet on the layoffs, quote, Disney Interactive continually looks to find ways to create efficiencies and streamline our operations. As part of this ongoing process, we are consolidating a small number of teams and are undergoing a targeted reduction in the workforce. On September 2, 2015, Club Penguin closed down the German and Russian versions of the site. A spin-off mobile app, Puffle Wild, was removed from the App Store and Google Play the same day in order to allow Disney Interactive to focus on Club Penguin. On January 11, 2016, the Sled Racer and Sound Studio apps, the former being an online game and the latter being a port of a game on the website, followed suit. With the closure of Disney Interactive in 2015, Club Penguin side projects wound down to allow a streamlined effort to focus on the core Club Penguin experience. This involved the layoffs of 30 Disney Studios Canada staff. On January 30th, 2017, Club Penguin announced that the current game would be discontinued on March 29th, 2017 to make way for its successor, Club Penguin Island. Membership payments for the original game were no longer accepted as of January 31st, 2017, with paid members slated to receive emails about membership and refunds. It became popular in the final weeks of Club Penguin to attempt speedruns to see how fast users could get banned from the site. The fastest world records were tool-assisted speedruns. Days before the shutdown, Club Penguin announced that on the final day of the game's operation, all users would be given a free membership until the servers were disconnected. On March 30th, 2017, at 12.01 and 39 seconds a.m., Club Penguin servers were officially shut down. Section 2. Design. Section 2.1. Business Model. Prior to being purchased by Disney, Club Penguin was almost entirely dependent on membership fees to produce a revenue stream. The vast majority of users, 90% according to the Washington Post, chose not to pay, instead taking advantage of the free play on offer. Those who chose to pay did so because full, paid membership was required to access all of the services, such as the ability to purchase virtual clothes for the penguins and buy decorations for igloos, and because peer pressure created a caste system separating paid from unpaid members. Advertising, both in-game and on-site, was not incorporated into the system, although some competitors chose to employ it, including Yville, which used corporate sponsorship, and Neopets, which incorporated product placements. An alternative revenue stream came through the development of an online merchandise shop, which opened on the Club Penguin website in August 2006, selling stuffed puffles and t-shirts. 
keychains, gift cards, and more shirts were added on November 7, 2006. In October 2008, a series of plush toys based on characters from Club Penguin were made available online, both through the Club Penguin store and Disney's online store, and in retail outlets. As with one of its major rivals, Webkin's, Club Penguin traditionally relied almost entirely on word-of-mouth advertising to increase its membership base. Section 2.2, Child Safety. Club Penguin was designed for the ages of 6 through 14. Thus, one of the major concerns when designing Club Penguin was how to improve both the safety of participants and the suitability of the game to children. As Lane Merrifield stated, the decision to build Club Penguin grew out of a desire to create a fun virtual world that I and the site's other two founders would feel safe letting our own children visit. As a result, Club Penguin maintained a strong focus on child safety, to the point where the security features were described as almost fastidious and reminiscent of an Orwellian dystopia, although it was also argued that this focus might reassure more parents that it alienated. The system employed a number of different approaches in an attempt to improve child safety. The key approaches included preventing the use of inappropriate usernames, providing an ultimate safe chat mode, which limited players to selecting phrases from a list, using an automatic filter during standard safe chat, which allowed users to generate their own messages, and blocked profanity even when users employed creative methods to insert it into sentences, filtering seemingly innocuous terms such as mom, and blocking both telephone numbers and email addresses. It also included employing paid moderators out of 100 staff employed in the company in May 2007. Merrifield estimated that approximately 70 staff were dedicated to policing the game. It also included promoting users to EPF, or Elite Penguin Force, agent status and encouraging them to report inappropriate behavior. Each game server offered a particular type of chat the majority allowing either chat mode, but some servers allowed only the ultimate safe chat mode. When using standard safe chat, all comments made by users were filtered. When a comment was blocked, the user who made the comment saw it, but other users were unaware that it was made, suggesting to the speaker that they were being ignored rather than encouraging them to try to find a way around the restriction. Beyond these primary measures, systems were in place to limit the amount of time spent online, and the site did not feature any advertisements because, as described by Merrifield, within two or three clicks, a kid could be on a gambling site or an adult dating site. Nevertheless, after Club Penguin was purchased by Disney, concerns were raised that this state of affairs might change, especially in regard to potential spin-off products although Disney continued to insist that it believed advertising to be inappropriate for a young audience. Players who used profanity were often punished by an automatic 24-hour ban, although not all vulgar language resulted in an immediate ban. Players found by moderators to have broken Club Penguin rules were punished by a ban lasting from 24 hours to forever, depending on the offense. Section 2.3 Education and Charity Coins for Change was an in-game charity fundraising event which first appeared in 2007. The fundraising lasted for approximately two weeks each December during the game's annual holiday party. Players could donate their virtual coins to vote for three charitable issues, kids who were sick, the environment, and kids in developing countries. Players were able to donate in increments of 100, 250, 500, 1,000, 5,000, or 10,000 virtual coins. At the end of the campaign, a set amount of real-world money was divided among each of the causes based on the amount of in-game currency each cause received. At the end of the first campaign, the New Horizon Foundation donated a total of $1 million to the Worldwide Fund for Nature, the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, and Free the Children. In both the 2007 and 2008 campaigns, 2.5 million players participated. In 2009, Club Penguin donated 1 million Canadian dollars to charitable projects around the world. In 2010, Club Penguin donated $300,000 towards building safe places, $360,000 towards protecting the earth, and $340,000 towards providing medical help. Lane Merrifield said, 
Our players are always looking for ways to make a difference and help others, and over the past five years, they've embraced the opportunity to give through Coins for Change. It was exciting to see kids from 191 countries participate together. In 2011, the amount of money donated was doubled to $2 million, ostensibly in response to an unexpected increase in participation. Section 3, Plot and Gameplay. Club Penguin was divided into various rooms and distinct areas. Illustrator Chris Hendricks designed many of the first environments. Each player was provided with an igloo for a home. Members had the option of opening their igloo so other penguins could access it via the map under Member Igloos. Members could also purchase larger igloos and decorate their igloos with items bought with virtual coins earned by playing minigames. At least one party per month was held on Club Penguin. In most cases, a free clothing item was available, both for paid members and free users. Some parties also provided member-only rooms which only paid members could access. Some major Club Penguin parties were its annual Halloween and holiday parties. Other large parties included the Music Jam, the Adventure Party, the Puffle Party, and the Medieval Party. Section 4. Franchise Disney's franchise into the brand began with its acquisition of Club Penguin in 2007. In addition to the Club Penguin Island web-based video game, the franchise has also included console video games for Nintendo DS and Wii, television specials in the UK, and a series of books. Section 5. Critical Reception Club Penguin received mixed reviews throughout its journey. The site was awarded a Kids Privacy Seal of Approval from the Better Business Bureau. Similarly, Brian Ward, a detective inspector at the Child Abuse Investigation Command in the United Kingdom, stated that it was good for children to experience a restricted system such as Club Penguin before moving into social networking sites which provide less protection. In terms of simple popularity, the rapid growth of Club Penguin suggested considerable success, although there were signs that this was leveling out. Nielsen figures released in April of 2008 indicated that in the previous 12 months, Club Penguin traffic had shrunk by 7%. A criticism expressed by commenters was that the game encouraged consumerism and allowed players to cheat. While Club Penguin did not require members to purchase in-game products with real money, instead relying on a set monthly fee, players were encouraged to earn coins within the game with which to buy virtual products. In addition, the competitive culture that this would create led to concerns about cheating, as children looked for shortcuts to improve their standing. It was suggested that this might influence their real-world behavior. To counter this, Club Penguin added guidelines to prevent cheating and banned players who were caught cheating or who encouraged cheating. The use of in-game money was commented on as possibly helping teach children how to save money, select what to spend it on, improve their abilities at math, and encourage them to practice safe money management skills. In spite of the attempts to create a safe space for children in Club Penguin, Concerns about safety and behavior still arose within the media. While the language in-game was filtered, discussions outside of Club Penguin were beyond the owner's control, and thus it was stated that third-party Club Penguin forums could become, quote, as bawdy as any other chat. Even within the game, some people noted that cyberbullying could still occur, with flame wars potentially occurring within the game. Also, the caste system between those who had membership in exclusive items and those who lacked full membership and therefore were unable to own the coolest items could lead to players having a difficult time attracting friends. One criticism came from Caitlin Flanagan in the Atlantic Monthly. In relation to the safety procedures, she noted that Club Penguin was, quote, certainly the safest way for unsupervised children to talk to potentially malevolent strangers but why would you want them to do that in the first place?" End quote. While views of the strength of this criticism might vary, the concern was mirrored by Lindsay Cayley in the Sunday Independent, who quoted Karen Manson, communications director for Club Penguin, as saying, We cannot guarantee that every person who visits the site is a child. On August 20th, 2013, Disney announced that Toontown Online, Pixie Hollow, and Pirates of the Caribbean Online were closing directly because of Club Penguin and Disney's mobile games. 
This caused major controversy between Club Penguin and fans of the three games, especially Toontown, where some users had played for more than 12 years. Toontown's alpha test started in August 2001. Section 6. Private Servers A Club Penguin private server, commonly abbreviated and known as CPPS, is an online multiplayer game that's not part of Club Penguin, but uses the Swift files from Club Penguin, a database, and a server emulator in order to create a similar environment for the game. Many now use these environments in order to play the original game after its discontinuation. CPPSs often contain features that did not exist in the original game, such as custom items and rooms, free membership, etc. Throughout its existence, various players created private servers of Club Penguin. The most popular among these is CPPS.me, a private server launched in 2011 that has since reached over 2 million players and is available in five languages. In response to the closure of the game, more private servers were created. One of them, Club Penguin Rewritten, launched February 12, 2017, had reached a million players as of October 12, 2017. Though discontinued, quote, permanently on March 4, 2018, Citing community support and funding, it returned in April of 2018. Section 6.1 Legal Status Since private servers essentially copy materials copyrighted by Disney, there has been much controversy as to whether or not creating and hosting them is legal. Disney and Club Penguin often pursue CPPSs and attempt to have them taken down with DMCA notices. Section 6.2 Vulnerabilities Many private servers have become vulnerable to DDoS attacks and database leaks due to insufficient security measures. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by hyphen sa slash 3.0.